Joining us now is OG Okpe with stories trending around the world. Hello, Jinika. Good morning, Dr. How are, you? How are you? So what's the plan for this weekend? Well, first of all, TGIF. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Friday. The weekend is coming. Yeah, it's good to see you. <laughs> you too. You, you look never great. asked me what my plans are for the weekend. And oh. I know why you don't, but it still hurts. <laughs> Because so you know I never have any plans. <laughs> you just no, we're going out you. this weekend too. You know I'm not going Jeez. anywhere. You know I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> you look great. Thank in you. Your Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Rafai. How are you? Hi, good morning. Uh, hope you're great. I love your tie, by the way. Oh, thank you. Got to see you. It was you. Was it? Yeah, it was you. you you're, you're, just, you're, you're special. Oh. Thank you. You look great. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Well, good morning to you, viewers. Here are some of the highlights of what's trending across the globe. First, in Nigeria, all bandits are not criminals, says Zamfara State Governor Bello Metawale. While in the same vein, Governor of Ondo State Rotimi Akiridolu says he is banning open grazing and will arrest any cow he sees on the streets. They were banning op open grazing. And if you see a cow, we arrest it. So if you see the cows, we arrest them. If they, are moving, they can't move in the accurate and I won't allow it. It's not going to happen. We must put an end to it. Meanwhile, aggrieved parents call out the AKT State Task Force for locking up nursery school pupils inside the school. This is what is going on in Adwekiti, Adwekiti State. In a school in Bashiri, Adwekiti. They said the government task force came to lock the children, lock the school. But how can you lock a school up since morning? This is almost to four now. This is very bad. This is uncalled for. This is bad. Then in India, a 12-year-old autistic girl has set a record by swimming 36 kilometers in the Arabian Sea. And celebrations in the United States as NASA's Perseverance rover has landed on Mars, making it the fifth vehicle on the red planet. And finally, a picture of icicles hanging from a ceiling fan in Texas went viral over the internet. And after days of power outage, here's a video of Nigerians in Texas Celebrating the power restoration. <laughs> Dr. Bati, up Nepa. So <laughs> All well, I mean, that's quite yes, hilarious. So it means you can take a Nigerian yes. out of Nigeria, but you but can't take Nigeria out of him. Yeah. So these are guys in uh, Texas, uh, you know, remembering home, yes. memories of home, yes. uh, even when they are abroad. Yes. But the big issue about uh, Texas and the, um, the uh, blackout yeah. uh, in the last four days in Texas, in Arkansas, in um, uh, other parts of the United States, including Louisiana, yes. West Virginia. It's just about the fact that, look, how extreme weather conditions exactly. can That's affect infrastructure, so right. uh, climate change. Uh, and this has generated some discussion in the U.S. Right. about what to do with climate change. Right. With uh, President uh, Biden now asking uh, that... Uh, uh, generators should be sent to the affected states. And diesel. And, and I find that uh, <laughs> quite uh, amusing. But you've seen the uh, federal government in the U.S. responding, uh, including Kamala Harris mm -hmm. uh, going on NBC Today show to express empathy. You know, they didn't think this is a small issue. And the U.S. is thinking ahead in terms of how you can use solar power, uh, wind energy, uh, to address this situation. But I'm sure Nigerians that, are yeah. excited that even in the U.S., there can be blackout for four days and people will have issues. I don't think with, they're uh, excited. With uh, heater, with uh, water, yeah. with uh, basic the uh, supplies. Terrible. But the other side of it, uh, we don't have more time on that subject, yeah. is about Senator Ted Cruz. Who is yeah. vacationing who, right now. He's back. The, the yeah. senator he's from Texas. He left. Yeah, he's had to head Going over to Mexico Can with his daughters Cancun, and giving an excuse. A resort. The Biden and Kamala Harris have shown, uh, you know, greater empathy in this regard. And well, also the governor of Texas disgracing himself. Abbott. Yes. That's his name? Yes. Abbott. Governor Abbott of Texas disgracing himself, lying on TV, saying that this is what you get with the Green New Deal. This is because they're trying to bring in solar power, wind power, and they're trying to stop fossil fuels. I mean, Indeed. well, but well let's begin in change Dominic. is a big issue yes. for the Biden administration. It is. Right. And this is probably a wake-up call 
you know, changes in uh, the climate, in weather, are producing, resulting in extreme conditions mm -hmm. and a lot of discomfort that the people are not used to. Right. But it's good that about 1.6 million homes now have uh, electricity in Texas. It's nice we, to see. We find it interesting here in Nigeria, something we are used to. <laughs> you know, <laughs> daily occurrence. Well, maybe you are not used to it, but I'm used to it. I'm not used to All it. All right, we'll begin <laughs> with the governor of Zamfara State, Bello Metawale, who's come under fire on social media for saying that not all bandits who terrorize parts of the state and other neighboring states are criminals. The governor explained that most of the bandits take up arms due to the injustice meted on them by some members of the society, adding that in some of the conflict recorded in the Northwest, where reprisal attacks by the bandits on vigilante groups. The governor went on to advise leaders to get to the genesis of the problem and not conclude that all bandits were criminals. In the meantime, the immediate past chief of army staff, Lieutenant General Turko Buratai, has told the Senate that it will take Nigeria the next 20 years to address the security challenges confronting the country at the movement. Rufai, we want to ask you about these two stories, first with mm. um, the immediate past chief of army staff, Tuko Boratai. Um, he made some comments about the fact that, you know, there were issues that would make it <laughs> take 20 years for uh, Nigeria's security challenges to be addressed. And then also Governor Bello Metawale, who is saying that bandits are not criminals. I mean, what are they if they're not criminals? I don't know. He should tell us because there's something obviously he knows that I don't know. If the bandits are not criminals, he should tell us. It's not time to politicize the English language here. Go and check the meaning of a bandit. Somebody roaming free in an ungoverned area that is doing criminal things. That's who a bandit is. So a bandit is a criminal. But let me go one step further. If he says the bandits are fighting for their rights because some people hurt them, obviously it's not the innocent citizens the bandits are killing that hurt them. It's the politicians. So why don't the politicians get after the bandits? And he knows so much because this man happens to be the man negotiating now for the Kagara boys, I mean for the Kagara children incident in Niger State. He, in the Kankara boys episode, he was the one that negotiated. So apparently he knows this bandit so well more than we know. So the question we should ask this man is that what is, what is it that he knows? Because he's been chief negotiator two times. What is currently going on and what happened before? So he knows them. So for him to come out to say that not all bandits are criminals, now they are freedom fighters because some people hurt them in the past, he should tell us what we don't know before. And it's quite shocking we are hearing this rhetoric in this country at this point in time. Let me move to uh, uh, Mr. Tuko Burutai. You know, when I hear rhetoric like that, it's going to take 20 years. I get shocked that somebody in the security apparatus, that was, the security was put in his hands at a point in this country. He was chief of army staff saying this is going to take 20 years. What makes him say that? Again, I ask, what does he know that we don't know about these things? You know, because there are some things these people might know that we might not know. So for him to say it would take 20 specific years to go through this nightmare we are going through in this country, and he's come out to say that boldly? Shouldn't we be thinking of how to end this in the next one minute or one month? There's obviously a lot that we have to know that we don't know. As regards his statements like this, and I get shocked. It's panicky. At first, they are telling us who criminals are now, who people that are hurting other people are now. I'm sure they will go one step further ahead to tell us that those that, they, that they kidnapped these boys in Kagara, they are freedom fighters. Maybe they did it in the interest of the boys. What is really happening? We need to build a nation that is devoid of sentiment. I come out here, I say these things because I love my country and I want it to work. Innocent lives have been wasted every day. A boy was shot in the head. Do you know the future and the destiny of that boy you've wasted? And when all of this happens, people have the effrontery to still legitimize these people. And you see what hurts me is that this rhetoric is coming from people that we ought to think they will do better. Right. Thank you, Rufai. I mean, when the chief of the immediate past chief of Amistad says 20 years, I, I just wonder, did he know that while he was 
uh, Chief of Army Staff. Well, I don't want to just run with the headline. Yeah. Let's look at the actual content yes, of what I he said. Context, yes. He made a reference to the fact that it's not just a military problem. It's actually an economic problem. He was referring to the lack of hospitals, schools, roads, yes. what have you. So he's thinking of a holistic solution. However, that 20 years, as far as I'm concerned, was a mistake on his part to make that kind of a statement. Thank you. During your Senate screening, to assume a position to represent Nigeria abroad, having, in your own words, effectively failed as chief of army staff. He should never have uttered such a thing. It's actually really embarrassing that he did. We all understand that it's not all about military force, which brings me to Governor Matawale, which I think that statement he also made, bandits are not criminals. Again, I'm not going to just run with the headlines. I think that was the oft-referenced non-kinetic measures, that not everything is brute force. You have to be diplomatic and you have to sort of negotiate with people. But he would do well to be very careful, again, in his choice of words, because it appears that he's justifying horrific crimes against Nigerians. Yes. He should also read about Neville Chamberlain, who also had an appeasement policy towards Adolf Hitler. We all see how that ended up. You cannot appease people with violence and expansionist agendas. You simply cannot. It does not work. And he's going, I feel, he's bending over too far, trying to explain. It, it almost appears as he's justifying it. Because they've experienced injustice in the society means that they should then go and kill and rape. I hardly think so. He should really be very balanced in his words. It's very important, the messaging at this point. I agree with you, Tundra. Dr. Abati, your take on the story. Well, Good first, story. Um, <clears throat> Governor Matawale, um, I think uh, the biggest gift that he requires at this moment is a gift of a dictionary. Although my uh, nephew, David uh, Abati, was telling me the other day that these days nobody carries a dictionary about. Since there is an oracle, called Google, that you can just check. But so if he, he, he doesn't need a dictionary, he should go to the oracle, the modern oracle, and check the meaning of banditry. Right. Now, bandits are criminals because they engage in violence, they cause murder, they, cause, uh, they, they engage in extortion, they create problems. So when uh, Matawale says not all bandits are criminals, uh, well, we can't excuse him uh, on the ground that uh, English language is not very easy, uh, particularly for second speakers of the English language. So I don't know his level of education. So you may excuse him. He may be deficient uh, in that regard. But getting access to a dictionary will help him in that regard. Now, when he says not all bandits are criminals, he's also assuming that there are good bandits, there are bad <laughs> bandits. And we are seeing on this platform that there are no good bandits. No. A bandit is an enemy of the state. He's a criminal uh, who must be sanctioned under the law. The third point, I think the governor is suffering from what is called the Stockholm Syndrome. The Stockholm Syndrome simply means that you the victim is identifying with the person that is uh, punishing him. So here he is, uh, a whole governor, who is supposed to be chief security officer of the state, going to the commander-in-chief and making a case for persons that he has identified as good bandits. And I think that it shows the quality of leadership that we have in Nigeria and makes a strong case for persons who say that, look, we need to take a look and the quality of people who occupy important positions. I have more to say, but let's take a short break, and then we'll return, and what's trending with OGOP will continue. Welcome back to the morning show here on the Arise News Channel. Ojinika is still here with stories trending from around the world. Before we went on break, I think I had said enough about uh, Governor Matawale. Yes. He should go get that dictionary yes. and educate himself properly. Now, as for... Um, Tuko Buratai. Yes, Lieutenant General Tuko Buratai uh, retired. Well, he was not the only person who spoke along those lines. He was at a screening uh, before the Committee on uh, Foreign Affairs. And I think Oloni Shakin, former Chief of Defense Staff, also spoke along the same lines. The uh, former... Chief of uh, Defense Intelligence, uh, General Usman, also spoke along the same lines. Uh, but what I find shocking, surprising, 
is that these were service chiefs, people in charge of security before now, uh, who always issue statements to tell us that the Nigerian military was on top of the situation. They had decimated uh, Boko Haram. Now they've left office only to come and tell us, oh, this problem can't be solved. The military cannot do it alone. Three, four weeks ago, they were telling us they were in charge. They could do it. So I see hypocrisy here, you know, and I, I find it quite con con contradictory. If they are saying this because they want to become uh, diplomats, then the Senate uh, should take a critical look at this in terms of uh, their integrity, because this is not what they were telling us about a month ago. But at the level of collective responsibility, well, that's a moot point. We can take that. You know, there is a lot that needs to be done because there are many dimensions to the security challenge uh, in Nigeria. At an intellectual level, that's fine. But we will have expected them to say the same things uh, when they were in office. We'll take another story. A video of a parent lamenting about how some nursery school children were locked up by the AKT State Task Force is making the rounds on social media. Well, according to reports, the school premises was locked up over the failure of its management to pay their tax. Let's take a look. This is what is going on in Adwekiti, Adwekiti State, in a school in Bashiri, Adwekiti. I was there this afternoon to pick up my child, and this is what happened. Since 8 a.m., the school has been sealed, the gate locked, and the children are there. There are little, little children there. No one to attend to them. Parents cannot come in to pick up their kids. They said the government tax force came to lock the children, lock the school. And some this is this has to stop. These children are not animal. We are all human beings. They should just give a, a, a notice for the parents to come in and pick up their kids. Then you can lock up the school. But how can you lock a school up since morning? This is almost to four now. And you, you said they are coming to open, reopen the school, and you didn't come back. And there are children there, which are not, they are not even feeling fine. And you lock up the school, and you left. With the, the school authority have called several for you people to come and open, and you, they didn't even come and open. They didn't even, you know, even feel remorse for this bad attitude that, 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 that they are displaying. This is very bad. This is uncalled for. This is bad. In a government, in a, in a state that has good government, in a state that has leadership, this is unfair. This is unfair, and the, moreover, these children are not the ones to pay for the for, for, for the revenue. This is this is this is not called for at all. This is not the children's fault. So they have to release the children. You can't just come in from outside and lock up a school for this for, 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 for that matter. This is uncalled for. All right, Rufai, your take on this story. I mean, this is horrific, but apparently the AKT state government has ordered an investigation into this issue, but it should never, ever have happened. It should never have happened, and it's quite very sad that this is happening in the first place. And I'm a little bit iffy about the tax laws. I think education has some tax exemptions. I don't know the one precisely it is, but I'm seeing in income tax for an education body. It's quite iffy to me because when you even look at the tax collections, from big companies, there are specific tax collections that are like education taxes to support education. So this is the first time I'm seeing that a school will be locked up for not paying income tax. I mean, maybe you can educate me on that, I mean, but I know it's a little bit iffy on I that. Secondly, it is very sad. And you see, we need to speak to those that go out there and enforce the law. We should stop this barbaric mindset. You can't lock students and uh, pupils up in a school because of non-payment of taxes, and you violate their right to movement. This is sad, this is madness, and this should not be happening in a state like Ikiti. I'm excited that the state governor has looked into it. Everything should be done to ensure that they get out of there, but this is sad. People shouldn't take laws in their hands. We are not a banana republic, we right. are a country. Right, Dr. Abati. Well, there's another side to the story. This is just one side of the story, the sentimental side to the story that uh, has gone viral. Uh, the uh, AKT uh, Internal Revenue Service, they issued a statement saying that the video that has been shown does not quite represent the entire story. That yes, that school, Adonai International School, Adwekiti, that's the name of the school, that they had received notices, reminders about the need for them to meet their tax obligations. They ignored according to the EKIRS. Yes. Uh, they, they ignored all those uh, reminders. And then that when this particular school was shut down, they left the uh, uh, pedestrian gate open. 
What they said they blocked in that uh, press release is, uh, you know, the main gate for vehicles. And they accused the woman who took this video, who is obviously a concerned parent uh, of mischief, of blackmail. Uh, you know, so I just thought that we need to put that second part of it there. So this video, the position of the woman talking in that, inside that video, in that video, may not truly represent the exact uh, situation. But the other issue, of course, is, okay, why tax private investors mm. in education? When education uh, is supposed to be a major priority uh, for government. Uh, the same state that does not tax churches. All these churches, uh, pastors who use their pulpits uh, to uh, mislead the people and buy uh, private jets, they don't pay tax. They don't get shut down. Uh, but the ones that get shut down are the people who are trying to make a contribution and uh, groom uh, people. But the governor of Ikiti State is an enlightened man. He's an educated man. He has a PhD in world studies. And I, I assume that he understands the importance of education. So he should look into this and see how he can resolve it. Right. Uh, Tundu, please, your take on the story. I had a very important story for our final story, but I don't think we have time. We only have two minutes left. But go ahead. It's well, fine. Well, Dr. Bati has said yeah. my take. There are two sides. We keep saying this. We should not get carried away with the hysteria. Yes. And, you know, general tendency to assume the very worst of this country right. and our government. You know, it's all rather disappointing. But sometimes right. we have to listen to the other side and, you know, balance the issue. Apparently, the, the lady in question, the mother in question, purposely filmed right. only the gate. With, but the thing is, the flyer panel. was there. I mean, did yes. she make up the flyer? It said closed. No, so I so don't, that's I don't, the I'm thing. not arguing I mean, I about even, that. Yeah. But that the children, when I saw that video, yes. I thought this is a fire hazard. Right. If a fire breaks out, the children will be stuck there. And then I now checked this um, statement that you gave. The children would not have been stuck in the event of a fire because... The other gate was open. And well, what they're trying to say is that she deliberately filmed just a part, yes. which, you know, we all agree is wrong. You have yes. to tell the whole truth. This is horrible. Well, thank you, guys. That's all I have for you guys on What's Trending today. Thank well, you, OG. Thank you. Thank you.